What's up, sons? It's Blydrod with Son of a Tech once again, and today we're going to talk about the scary, scary fires caused by 4-pin Molex to SATA adapters being used on mining rigs. I've tested a variety of GPUs as well as, of course, the different types of adapters, and we're going to talk about the differences in them and what might be causing this, uh, theoretically backed by, of course, some hard math, so stick around. Welcome back. When I say theoretically, I can't actually get all of the awesome testing hardware that we would need. Now there are guys like Johnny Guru that go ahead and go into super deep depth into power supply efficiency and load testing and so on and so forth, but the tools to do that are quite expensive. But what I can do is run some basic math and show you guys why this is happening. But first I'm going to talk about the mixed mining rig I used to test this and the cards that have gone through it in the, this period of testing. Now I have one that you can check out up here and it has a whole bunch of different cards in it. We're talking that a Fury Nano has been in it, RX 580s, Vegas, Titans, 1050s, 1050 Ti's, RX 580s and RX 480s, 470s and 570s. Everything's been rotated through this rig. Every single PCI extension is powered by one of these adapters. Now there are two different types of adapters. You're going to have the soldered and then you can have the crimped for specific reasons that you can probably go ahead and guess at here. The soldered are going to be a little bit more reliable than the crimped as well as any kind that you can get with a larger gauge wire. So typically you're going to see a gauge of about 18 and if you can get larger than that, that's going to be better don't get any smaller than 18 and you should be okay if you're using one of these adapters in specific situations that we're going to go over now now over the course of all of this testing only two cards actually ended up melting the ends the end that it melted was the 12 volt yellow wire that goes into the molex connector so not on the sata side but on the molex side luckily nothing caught fire everything just kind of melted and this is actually due to something called the ul94 flammability ratings and if you hop on there you can actually see that there are different levels of flammability ratings and most uh, if not well all of the plastics are required to meet this standard so you should be good to go if you can find a flammability rating i highly recommend finding it and then cross-referencing it with wikipedia uh, which is what i pulled up for the ratings where it tells you what is allowed to catch on fire what's allowed to melt and for how long the lowest standard in this which could possibly be being implemented in some of the cheaper adapters is going to actually allow burning particles, so melting burning particles to actually catch fire while dropping after 30 seconds. So in that time period, if you don't have your mining rig in a section or an area that is somewhat flame resistant, you could find yourself in trouble. Basically, the moral of the story here is don't use one of these and put paper towels underneath it, you know, and you should probably be okay as long as you have some sort of metal underneath it, so on and so forth. That dripping plastic that does catch flame should go away. Now, the standard as you move up removes any kind of lenience for these particles or this melting plastic to go ahead and catch fire. So if you can find these adapters with a specific rating stated, you're going to be way better off here in this situation. So the two cards that ended up catching fire were a GTX 1050 Ti, and by catching fire I mean it melted and shorted out and then the other one was an rx 580 now i have some theories as to why this is and it actually becomes pretty clear pretty quickly if you hop on to any of these spec sheets for any of these adapters which i'll link actually there's a nice website called like molex uh, ironically but it has ratings for a whole bunch of different adapters what you'll find is that the standard for these adapters is one and a half amps with a max voltage of 40 which means at this point you're looking at a max wattage once you run the math through a calculator of 60 watts now what would the PCIe rating be for this slot well the slot on the PCIe is actually only rated for 66 watts and at 66 watts though you're still 66 watts 
of course, over the requirement or over the max allowed wattage going across that adapter. So that's automatically already going to say at this point that anything as far as within spec within those specs has the possibility of shorting out or catching fire or failing. Now, why does it not? Why is the Titan not having issues or the Vegas? They draw a lot more power, right? Well, yes, but the issue is actually alleviated by the fact that it has a larger power draw from the six and eight pin power adapters that are installed on those cards. And in the world of PCIe ratings, typically what they're trying to do is reduce the amount of power coming from the PCIe slot and increase the amount of power or the primary power to come from the actual PCIe's. So in this case, what you're seeing is the reason the 1050 Ti was one of the first to melt is because it is pulling all of its power from that PCIe rail. So on an algo that's gonna be pushing that card quite far, where it's at max TDP at all times, it's gonna be pulling quite a bit more wattage. And on peaks, it could be pulling, of course, the full 66 watts. And over a lengthened period of time, i.e. in situations where you're mining cryptocurrencies, it's inevitable that that's going to fail at some time or another. But wait a minute, you said that of course the RX 580 also melted. Why would that be? Well, this one's a little bit different of a situation. While Radeon has come out and released drivers to patch this, on initial launch they did find and reviewers found quite frequently that the RX 580s were pulling more power from the PCIe slot than what was rated for the actual slot itself. As opposed to pulling the Max 66, it ended up actually pulling about 73 to 78 watts and being way out of spec. Now, while they supposedly passed this for drivers or in drivers or software, in the case of mining, it appears that what's going on here is either the patch didn't fully solve that issue or it just reduced it down to the standard of 66 watts and is still not pulling the big amount of power out of the PCIe 6 or 8 slot, depending on which card you've got. So this is kind of why those two cards failed. And that kind of also explains why most people say stay away from these is because a majority of mining rigs that were built in the past year to year and a half were using these RX 580 cards. And if you were using these RX 580 cards and you were using them with these particular adapters, they weren't just a little bit out of spec, but they were way out of spec. And even after the patches, which might not even be applied to the blockchain drivers, even after all of that, it's still pulling more from the PCIe slot than it should. So I hope that gives you guys a good grasp on these adapters in particular. I definitely encourage you guys to go check out all of the numbers, check out the ratings and of course the cables. So there's really two things you want to look at and we could get into more of this later on, but you're going to want to be looking at the gauge of the wire and then of course the amperage rating as well as the voltage rating and then doing the math to go ahead and determine max pull there. So that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below, and I'll see you next Tuesday.